In this video, we are going to study about the lateral ventricles. There are two lateral ventricles. So this is one, the other one is here. There are two lateral ventricles, one in each cerebral hemisphere. Each lateral ventricle is roughly a C-shaped cavity situated within each cerebral hemisphere. The lateral ventricle wraps itself around the thalamus, lentiform nucleus and caudate nucleus. It is lined by ependyma and it is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. It has a capacity of about 7 to 10 ml. The main parts of two ventricles are separated from each other by a septum extending from the corpus callosum and the fornix which is known as the septum pellucidum. The septum pellucidum is a thin vertical sheet of nervous tissue consisting of gray and white matter and covered on either side by the ependyma. Each lateral ventricle communicates with the third ventricle through the interventricular foramen of Munro and most of the CSF in the CNS is produced by the choroid plexus of two lateral ventricles. Next we'll see the parts of the lateral ventricle. For descriptive purpose, each lateral ventricle is divided into four parts. A central part or body which lies mostly within the parietal lobe and extends from the intraventricular foramen in front to the splenium of the corpus callosum behind. And then you have the anterior horn or the frontal horn. So this is an anterior extension from the central part into the frontal lobe and it lies in front of the interventricular foramen and behind the posterior surface of the genu of the corpus callosum. Next you have the posterior horn or occipital horn. So it is a backward extension from the central part into the occipital lobe towards the occipital pole. Then you have the inferior horn or temporal horn and it is considered as a direct continuation of the main ventricular cavity into the temporal lobe. The inferior horn is the largest of the three horns. It begins where the central part and the posterior horn meet and curves around the pulvinar of the thalamus into the temporal lobe to end about 2.5 cm behind the temporal pole. The posterior horn is the most recent one in evolution scale among the three horns. Next we'll see the boundaries of the different parts of the lateral ventricle. First we'll see the boundary of the central part or the body of the lateral ventricle. The central part or the body is triangular in shape in coronal section with the medial wall, roof and the floor. The roof is formed by the undersurface of the body or the trunk of the corpus callosum. The floor slopes downwards from lateral to medial side. It is formed by the body of the caudate nucleus, the stria terminalis and palamostriate vein, lateral part of the upper surface of the thalamus, the choroid plexus covering the medial part of the upper surface of the thalamus, the upper surface of the body of the fornix. The medial wall is formed by the septum pellucidum. So these are the boundaries of the central part or the body of the lateral ventricle. Next we'll see the boundaries of the anterior or frontal horn. The anterior horn is roughly triangular in cross section and presents a roof, floor, medial wall, lateral wall and an anterior wall. The roof is formed by the undersurface of the anterior part of the body of the corpus callosum. The floor is narrow and it is formed by the upper surface of the rostrum of the corpus callosum. 
the anterior wall is formed by the genu of the corpus callosum and this is the medial wall which is formed by the septum pellucidum and the lateral wall is formed by the bulging head of the caudate nucleus next we'll see the boundaries of the posterior horn or the occipital horn it is quadrangular or diamond shaped in coronal section and presents a roof lateral wall floor and medial wall the roof lateral wall and the floor are formed by a sheet of fiber that is called as the tapetum from the splenium of the corpus callosum the posteriorly sweeping fibers of the optic radiation remain separated from the cavity of the posterior horn by the tapetum the medial wall is invaginated by two ridges the upper one is the bulb of the posterior horn which is formed by the fibers of the forceps major and the lower one is called the calcar avis which is produced by the anterior part of the calcarine sulcus next we'll see about the inferior horn or the temporal horn the inferior horn is the largest and the longest of the three horns it begins where the central part and the posterior part meet from here it curves ventrally downwards and forwards into the temporal lobe the area where the inferior horn posterior horn diverge is called collateral trigon the inferior horn lies more or less parallel to the superior temporal sulcus and in coronal section it appears as a transverse slit presenting a roof and a floor the lateral part of the roof is formed by the tapetum of corpus callosum and the medial part of the roof is formed by the tail of the caudate nucleus and stria terminalis the floor presents the following structure from lateral to medial first is the collateral eminence it is an elongated swelling in the lateral part of the floor produced by the collateral sulcus which is deep enough to produce this elevation next is the hippocampus and another longitudinal elevation lying parallel and medial to the collateral eminence the fibers of the hippocampus forms a thin sheet of white matter called alveus that covers its ventricular surface the fibers of alveus converge medially and they form a ridge that is called as the fimbria next this is the choroid plexus most medially the floor is occupied by the choroid plexus that passes into the inferior horn through the choroid fissure which is formed between the fimbria below and the stria terminalis and the tail of caudate nucleus above next we'll see the choroid plexus on the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere along the c shape line between the diencephalon and the hemisphere the medial wall of the central part and the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle is made up of only ependyma the pia mater covering the ependyma along the c shape line is invaginated by a fringe like tuft of blood vessels into the central part and the inferior horn to form the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle the line of invagination of the choroid plexus into the lateral ventricle is called the choroid fissure at the intraventricular foramina the choroid plexus of one lateral ventricle is continuous with the counterpart of the other side across the third ventricle the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle is derived from the anterior choroidal artery a branch of internal carotid artery and the posterior choroidal artery a branch of posterior cerebral artery next we'll see the clinical correlation the general form of ventricular system of the brain can be visualized by a computerized tomography either by ct scan and magnetic resonance imaging mri 
The ventriculography is a radiological technique in which a small quantity of air or oxygen is introduced via a needle into the lateral ventricle through a bar hole in the skull. In the children below 2 years of age, the needle is inserted through the lateral angle of the anterior fontanel. The outline of the ventricles and the cerebral gyri are visualized by air encephalography also called as pneumoencephalography in which the air or oxygen is introduced into the subarachnoid space through the lumbar puncture. The air readily replaces the CSF within the ventricle and the subarachnoid space. The air or gas being less dense than the fluid or the neural tissue, the ventricles and the cerebral gyri are e easily visualized.